Hello everyone, Terrence here with Hollywood Already Did It. Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas, and uh, like my other video, the other major film that released on streaming this Christmas was Soul for Disney Plus and from Pixar. I'll give you my review and thoughts right after the jump. Real quick, if you haven't already, go ahead, like, share, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell below. Anytime we have something, you'll be among the first to know. Ah, uh, so, another one of those Pixar gut punches. Um, for some people, like me, it's uh, a message you already know that sometimes you need to be refreshed upon. And for some people, it's something that you really kind of forgot and didn't know. This film's pretty much premise and message is that you should... Your purpose in life should not deter you from enjoying all the things that uh, happen in your everyday life to mold you to the person you're supposed to be. You can chase that one big thing, and you should, but you will miss out on a lot of great things that are happening in your life if you're ignoring and putting all of your energy into that without seeing the day-to-day, -day, loving the day-to-day, -day, enjoying the day-to-day. -day. You can find happiness in the things that don't include your passion if you're open to it. Whereas I think Inside Out is a 1A, this is filmed as the 1B, uh, where Inside Out deals with the, the inner feelings, uh, soul more so deals with, like it says, the soul, and deals with the great beyond, after life, and the great beginning, before you're born, and uh, does so in a cute and inventive way that only Pixar can. I want to say something first before I kind of get into the rest of the review. I think... <laughs> I love all these think pieces that come out before a film is released when they see a trailer or they see something they're like, oh my god, all the films, animated films that feature black people always have them outside of being black. Uh, you don't really get to see them in their true form. You, they turn them into a frog or they turn them into the soul. And they say this and they do these think pieces without actually seeing the film. That's stupid and dangerous. Um, while I 100% agree with everybody's assessment of uh, The Princess and the Frog, we've seen that film and we had an entire film to see what they did, what they didn't do, and, and laid it out. You didn't do that, you didn't see that with Soul, and now I think you're coming back to regret this because in the case of here, if you watch this film before actually, spe before actually speak on it, you would not feel that way after watching it. Because this film handles black culture and black entertainment and the black experience, more importantly, the look and feel of African Americans and how we vary in shape, size, style, nose sizes, lip sizes, hairstyles, all of that. How we are a myriad of things. This film does a fantastic job of putting that all out there on screen. Um, more so than I think any animation that I've ever seen before. There is a sequence that in this film that happens in a barbershop that is 100% <laughs> my life. And I think any black, young black male who's, who's gone to a barbershop would 100% understand this. Uh, sequence and you see it and you feel it you it took me back to being a kid and being um in those barbershops seeing you got the old man at the the, the <laughs> who's been doing his cutting hair stuff but nobody really goes to him unless it's a break in case of an emergency type of style i know that barber because i've been i've seen that barber and i've had to go to that barber before because i was running behind and i had to just roll with the punches and see what happens you don't get that type of realism without having people in the chair writing the stuff uh, who are of this world and of this cloth. So I think before you start throwing stones, all you bloggers out there, you might want to take the time and just see if this film doesn't fit in the same realm as, um, as The Princess and the Frog. So that's it. In this film, we get super existential, and I'm here for it. Uh, like I said earlier with Inside Out, we get to see what the world deals with humanity from the outside in. Instead of dealing with emotions, we're now dealing with great beyond and... and and something as simple, it's a small tweak, but it's really deep when you think about it. Something as simple as giving the people, the souls that are in the great before, no distinct characteristics. They're just small balls of, of blueness, of souls, um, but they haven't gone into a human body or human form to create who they are. They look very different than the folks that are in the great beyond who have established what they are as a characteristic. It's a small thing. They're both still blue little balls, but when you actually break it down and think about it, you're like, oh, that's a, such a genius way to do that and, and differentiate between the two folks, but also give some level of you, you're not formed. You're not who you are when you head to earth and are born. 
but you're a completely different person when you come out on the other end. This film does with, deals a lot with jazz music, and I would be remiss if I did not mention uh, Atticus Ross, Trent Reznor, and John Baptiste. Um, brilliant work from all three of you. This film does a good job of giving the three layers that we get in this completely different sounds and different effects. The Great Beyond sounds very different than The Great Before, and the world of soul uh, on, on earth where you're, you're dealing with black culture you're dealing with jazz and the feel is very different and those are three completely different uh feels and i think they nail it trent man you're killing it <laughs> jesus uh the music here um adds to the extra gut punch that you get from just the writing um and development of this character so on that list of once is enough, play it again, Sam, or give me a time stone so I never have to think about this film again. This is a play it again, Sam. This is one a heartfelt one. This is one of the best films that I've seen this year. Um, I won't quite rank it in the Pixar pantheon. I'm not there yet. I don't think it's on the level of stuff like um, the Toy Stories 1 and 3 or, uh, or um, Inside Out, but it's, it's close. It's right. It's real close. It's one of the better of the Pixar films, but those are my thoughts. If you've seen Soul, what did you guys think? Um, it might be a little too heady for kids, although I think there's stuff you can get, kids can get out of it, but I think Inside Out probably serves as a better kids film while adults enjoy it, why I think this serves as a better adult film and kids will like it, not nearly as much as they do Inside Out, but what did you guys think? Go ahead and leave your comments in the comments below. If you haven't, you can follow us on Twitter at Hollywood ADI, or you can hit us up on email at HollywoodAlreadyDidIt at gmail.com. We also have a podcast with the same name that's on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any other place podcast. We haven't done that in a while. Uh, things have been on a bit of hiatus because movies have not been releasing at the clip that they normally have. But we have an entire back catalog you can go ahead and listen to. We also have a sister podcast called You Can't Do That Anymore where we talk about uh, classic films like Gone with the Wind or American Beauty, Tropic Thunder. And when those films came out, looking at them with the, through the eyes of today and seeing if some of the things they did then, if they can still do today. And you can find that wherever podcasts are as well. But like always, I got my ticket. You got yours.